This video will cover networking events that working professionals that go through the green light program may be interested in. This will be a brief follow up video to the previous video on networking, specifically focusing on networking through informational interviews. After recording that video, I decided it would make sense to add a little bit more context around some of the networking events, because there are some pretty significant events that can one can participate in during, especially if interested in pipeline uh, campus recruitment type roles. So the four types of events I'll cover in this video include Carlson's corporate reception, employer info sessions through Carlson, career fairs, and then affinity conferences and their career fairs. So first, the Carlson's corporate reception. I've added the who, what, when, where, why's, how's for these events. So Carlson's corporate reception is an event, a networking event. It's not a career fair, but it's a networking event typically with 50 plus corporate partners it's over at the McNamara Alumni Center. It features high top tables for each organization represented. Each organization has at least one, but often multiple uh, representatives, often alums who are coming back to recruit or at least help network. This is an event for recruiting eligible MBAs. And I use that language specifically because Full-time MBAs are automatically eligible for this, but for working professional MBAs, so students in the Carlson Executive or SEMBA MBA, the online MBA, the part-time MBA, those students don't have the same upfront career orientation. And so students to be eligible, MBA students specifically, to be eligible for the corporate reception and campus recruitment opportunities need to complete the green light um, requirements. And so we'll talk more about those green light requirements in another video and in emails, but completing the green light program is a requirement to attend the corporate reception. It typically takes place in early September and is the kickoff to the campus recruitment season at Carlson. This year, it will be on the 11th of September it's usually around 5.30 to 8 o'clock, so students can come early and then go off to class or attend the beginning of class if they have a Wednesday evening class and then come over to the events, letting their professors know where they'll be. Um, it is really helpful for you to meet people that work at these organizations that you're interested in. So you can make contacts, companies often track who attends their info sessions. And so this would be another touch point when they're considering who to bring in for interviews. And it also can lead to learning a lot about the company, companies that maybe you're not lesser familiar with, get good insights as the ones that may be of interest to you, or for ones that are really competitive, learning the tips and tricks on how to stand out in the application season. So some preparation details. So I'll cover preparation on this slide and execution on the next slide. But essentially you're gonna register and get all the logistics through Handshake. There will be prep sessions typically held in late August, early September for the corporate reception. They'll teach you all the details about what to do. So these are just some high level tips today. Company research. So it'll be important to do company research before attending corporate reception. So you'll see the list of registered employers on Handshake, and then you can dig into their company web pages, their LinkedIn and social media pages, and other news items about these companies so that you're aware of things like their roles, their functions, their areas of business, trends, current events, uh, corporate culture, things like that. From there, you'll generate relevant questions to ask based on the research that you're doing because you don't want to ask questions that 
are things that you could easily research, like what types of jobs do you have or what do you do or what are some trends facing you this quarter when those are things that you could research instead wanting to ask more specific questions. Um, I'd also recommend talking to people who attended last year, whether it was a working professional or a second year MBA who attended last year's corporate reception and talking to coaches who've been there year after year to get insights of what does it look, feel like, um, tips, best practices, how to avoid any issues. Prep sessions will cover a lot of that, but attendees from last year may have other ideas to recommend to you. You also want to prepare your talking points and your intro, your pitch. We have examples of that in our ebook on page 29. Um, but being prepared to be able to talk about yourself and not just asking questions is critical. And finally, you'll want to wear business attire, business professional attire to this, which suits um, to this event. So the execution of this event is having a short intro. It's not going to be as long as you're telling me about yourself that you practice and prepare for interviews. It's more like a less than 30 second quick intro and asking questions to get the conversation off and running. Again, there's examples of pitches and other introductions at networking events. It's actually page 29, uh, specifically in the ebook. Uh, the whole networking section starts on page 22. So a research-based question is what you want to formulate for each company that you engage with. Here's an example. So you let's say you read something on their website that was interesting to you. So you structure the question. I read on your website that your company just acquired your largest competitor. What types of impacts will that have for you on the operations team? Uh, you also at the event will want to ask for contact information. You'll want to ask to connect on LinkedIn. You want to get their name so that you can look them up later on LinkedIn and send an invitation to connect. You may also ask for a business card. Although business cards are becoming less common, they may have one. And if they're not handing them out, you may also ask if you could get their email address because it'd be great for you to be able to directly connect with them if they're not very active on LinkedIn. I also recommend taking notes in between each employer that you talk to. So going off to a side high top table, jotting down some notes, following up what you're going to do next, but also looking up your research for the next company you'll go engage with. And then after the event, you're going to want to do following up. So connecting on LinkedIn, sending thank yous, and staying in touch. So the second type of event that I'll highlight are company info sessions. Company info sessions cover recruitment of uh, recruiting information for the companies that will be doing campus recruitment. So not all companies will host an info session, but the ones that will be doing interviews typically will host an info session the day or the week that the application is due. So they may have an info session on a Wednesday at noon, and then that evening at midnight, the application is due, or they may have a four to five o'clock session. And the, by the Friday of that week, they have their applications due. Some events include on-site treks or uh, company um on-site locations or treks to geographic locations to meet multiple companies. Um, typically, the MBA uh, program, full-time students and part-time students are welcome to attend is a trek out to either Seattle or the Bay Area, alternating each year. Some info sessions are virtually or hybrid, but most of them are in person these days. And so budgeting time off during the busy September, October time to attend an info, in-person info session over the lunch hour or at the end of the working day. Um, that's just something that we recommend all working professionals who will be very active in campus recruitment to budget for. These info sessions usually cover things like job openings, career pathways, corporate culture, Usually an alum or a recruiter or someone in the role will 
be on a panel to talk about all these different items. Afterwards, you're usually able to ask questions and network. And often companies will send multiple reps in part because they want to know who attended and did they stand out? And are these people that they would like to do uh, make an interview offer to? These typically take place in late September after the corporate reception through mid-October for full-time roles. Internships may have info sessions at the same time, or they may have them more during the internship recruiting timeline and application deadlines of later October in through early February. Career fairs, I'll touch on career fairs briefly. Briefly because Carlson doesn't officially host an MBA career fair for graduate level opportunities. The corporate reception is the closest thing in your mind as a big in-person event, but it's not a career fair, it's a networking evening. Um, for some specialty masters, so our HR students, our Mac and MBT students, MABA students, there may be, uh, or there is, career fair opportunities at the undergraduate Carlson Career Fair, which is the fall one is usually late September, early October. Um, it's usually over at uh, Mariucci Arena or Huntington Bank Stadium. And then in early February, there's a spring edition of it, usually smaller um, and fewer opportunities left at that point. These are typically not relevant for MBAs, uh, but sometimes specialty master's recruitment aligns with the undergraduate majors in those corresponding fields, such as HR or accounting as well. There are many other career fairs at the University of Minnesota, uh, but aren't just Carlson and graduate business level opportunities. Every fall, usually late October, early November, there's a government and nonprofit career fair over at Kaufman in the Great Hall. And the University of Minnesota system-wide system hosts a fair in late February. It's usually the same employers that would be at the Carlson Spring Career Fair. So if you pick one or the other, you may want to choose the larger fair in uh, late February, just because there'll be more employers there. Um, it's usually late February, varies in location. It's been anywhere from the Minneapolis Convention Center to uh, Mariucci to Huntington Bank Stadium and McNamara. In this year, in February 24, there was an in-person fair and then a virtual fair following it on a later date. And so there actually were two opportunities to engage. There's also annually different career fairs open to the public in the Minneapolis and Minnesota areas. You may see fairs for things like the startup community or people of color fair or different fairs that uh, may come and go on a calendar. Usually we'll try to include those types of fairs in the weekly green light newsletter. Okay, so the last one, and I highly recommend this if you are eligible for one of these affinity fairs. Affinity fairs and conferences um, happen typically in the fall and are targeting MBAs in different affinity groups. So the big three that we often send a number of students to, I'd say anywhere from two to a dozen students, sometimes larger, sometimes none, um, would be the National Black MBA Association's Conference and Career Fair. This year, it's going to be in Washington, D.C., uh, starting on September 17th. There's also the Reaching Out MBA, or ROMBA, which is a conference with career opportunities for the LGBTQIA+, and allies. This year it's going to be in Los Angeles and it starts on September 26th. The MBA Vets Conference, I believe every year is in Atlanta um, and it's usually early October. And they, for the last few years, have done a virtual career fair following, but I would still recommend 
going in person to that event if you are uh, an active or veteran, uh, active duty member or veteran. And there are other events and other MBA level fairs that are national. Prospanica is another one. We don't typically send a staff member to that event, but um, it may be of interest to you. Forte does a lot of leadership events and conferences for women. And there are other ones that you may find through Handshake or your own searching. If there are any other events, again, we'll put them in Handshake uh, or in our weekly green light newsletter so that you're aware of them. But these events often lead to more offers than um, you know, just applying online. And so I highly recommend that these in-person events you, if you're able to register for them, talk to your coach and tell you them that you're planning to attend. And also be in touch with our office because there may be some funds to help. It won't cover the entire cost of the flight and the conference registration and the housing, but uh, there may be some money to offset some of those costs. But these are highly, highly recommended opportunities. And with that, I'll conclude this video on various networking events.